Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's packed program, I'm going to be having a look at two main themes of this video. The first one is going to be the question that I've been asked the most often, and that is, when can we expect the end of this bull market? Can we get a ballpark figure? And I'm going to use a particular technique from the previous cycles that gives us some sort of an indication as to around about when we will be able to see a top for this bull market. I'll also be having a look at a particular pattern that seems to be playing out currently, which was playing out in 2020, and it's giving us a clue as to the direction of travel for Bitcoin in the coming weeks and months. And of course, we'll have a look at the wider markets, look at exactly what's happening in the background with Bitcoin, as well as the wider markets and the 60-day cycle. So if that sounds interesting, then without further ado, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, so one of the main questions that I get asked over and over again is that when can we expect the top of the bull market? And as you know, a lot of the things that we see currently with the Bitcoin price action is actually rooted in some of the patterns and the historical movements of the Bitcoin price over the last 12, 13, 14 years. Similarly, the end of the bull market seems to be coming to an end around about a particular pattern. And this is a pattern I'm going to be showing you. So please remember, I'm putting this in a historical context. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow, but what we can do is get some sort of an idea that based on a historical perspective, what we can expect. And that's in terms of the probability. And probabilities mean that there is also a chance that it may not happen. So please keep that in mind. So we should always take a mature view and not get stuck with predictions and certain timeframes. So here we have the first cycle from the inception of Bitcoin. We had this bull market and then we had this bear market and then we had this halving, the red line down here. And then we had the top at this precise point. And this is something I showed many months ago before we came into the halving in April. So I thought it's a good idea to revisit this as it's on people's minds. So the pattern is basically when you get to the bottom of this bear market, which is here, and we measure that to the halving, you can see here it's 50 bars. This is a weekly chart. So 50 weeks from the bottom here to the halving. And if we take the measure from the halving to the top here, that's 60 weeks. So about 10 weeks after the period between the bottom of the market to the halving, we actually came to a top here. So just bear that in mind. 10 weeks is about two and a half months. So that's your leeway. That's your flexibility based on the first cycle. And remember, the first cycle is an odd cycle because there's a huge amount of volatility and the patterns can be a little bit erratic. The more accurate picture would be the second and the third cycle. So if we move on to the second cycle, we topped out here at the end of 2013. This is the end of the bear market. This is the halving and this is the top here. And if we take a measure from the bottom of the bear market here to the halving, it gives us 76 weeks. And if we take that measure from the halving to the top, it gives us exactly 76 weeks. So what you find here is that from the bottom of the bear market to the halving is exactly the same as from the halving to the top of the bull market. And if we move on to the third cycle, which was the last cycle, which ended in November 2021. So we had topped out here in 2017, bear market, halving, and the top of the bull market here. So if we take a measure from the bottom of the bear market to the halving is 74 bars. And from the halving to the top of the bull market is 78 bars. So there's a four weeks misalignment of the bottom of the bear market to the halving and from the halving to the top. So you can see that this is a very much a flexible, but actually quite a nice, ballpark figure of where we're more likely to end up in terms of the top of the bull market in the current fourth cycle. So here we are, we bottomed out here at 15,400 in November 2022 and to the halving in April was 76 bars, that's 76 weeks. So if we take a measure based on the previous three cycles, if it's going to play out like that, and it is a big if because it's all about probabilities and we have three cycles which have given us a similar type of reading. So 76 weeks from the halving will take us all the way, as you can see here, to October 2025. So if you were to apply that flexible rule, 
maybe four or five or six weeks either side, you can say any time around September or October or November seems the most likeliest date for this journey for us to end. From where we are currently in this consolidation pattern here, from this cup and handle, this looks like the most likely pathway for us to be able to get to the top of the bull market, wherever this is going to be. And I'm not even going to give you any figures of where this is going to be. Only the market knows I don't have a crystal ball. The only thing that my crystal ball tells me is for all the viewers watching this video to empty their bank accounts into my bank account. And this now leads us very nicely to this particular pattern from 2020. So as you can see here, when the market was coming up to the previous all-time high here at 69,000, because it was coming to test the 69,000 previous all-time high before this halving, this was the first time in its history that Bitcoin was doing that. And what that really did was, that was a signal to put this box on our chart. And that is that this gave us a higher probability for a left translated cycle, which means that the market was going to top out before the halfway point, i.e. before the second year of a four-year cycle, which meant that we were going to have an extra year of a downward pullback. But as we've seen here, since that point, the market seems to have stalled into this wonderful bullish pattern called the cup and handle. And this pattern is a continuation pattern to the upside. So what we need to do is to re test the 73,800, having exhausted all the sellers in this pattern here. So when there are very few sellers in the market, the buyers will come in and push this market to new highs, to its destination at the end of the bull market. So this now leads me very nicely into this particular pattern from 2020, which seems to be playing out in this handle part of the actual cup and handle pattern. So this is the pattern that I'm talking about that before it got to its previous all time high over here, it created this pattern at this neckline of 14,000. So from this point onwards, it's this pattern that I'm talking about, which seems to be playing out at this point here. So what we're going to use is a technique called the bars pattern and then superimpose this over here and then have a look at, and then have a look at any clues that it's giving us in terms of the direction of travel for the Bitcoin price. So if you go to this symbol here and double click that, you'll see that there's a bars pattern there. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag this pattern from here to give us this pattern. And then we're going to drag this all the way up here. Now, please remember that this here was the COVID situation. So you need to just ignore that bit. But even when you ignore that bit, you can see that there is a particular pattern here. So this is the neckline at the 73,000. And what we have is a left shoulder, but it's extended into a double shoulder, which is exactly this bit and this bit here. And then this bit is your head. And this is the head that we've just got at the 49,000 reversal. So, so far we've got the left shoulder and then we've also got the head here. So what we're really waiting for, as you can see with this pattern as it's developing, it should come back up to this neckline, which is this neckline here. So if this pattern was to play out properly, at this point, at the neckline of 70, 72, 73,000, we should, just like in 2020, get some sort of a rejection, i.e. a pullback. So this is what you would be expecting, a pullback at that point, and then another retest, which is going to be there. And that is when it goes above that pattern, retests the previous resistance as support, and then off we go to play our guitars on the beach. So in essence, if you take this neckline here, this is the same neckline here, you've got the left shoulder and the head, left shoulder and the head. And what we're doing is waiting for this to come up to here. And then a rejection, then a retest where we punch through, come back, retest the resistance as support, and off we go. So this is how the pattern, if it plays according to that, and we know that the patterns rhyme, so it may not be exactly that. It may be that we break up on the first go here rather than come back and then 
do that. So let's see what happens. But it's always good to know the direction of travel of what's happening with Bitcoin. Okay, well, so we're going to move on to what's happening in the market in terms of the news. So we're well aware of it. We don't have to agree with the news, but it's very important that we are aware of the news as it will affect the Bitcoin price and the mindset of the people who are in this space. And one of the most recent articles and what's in the news at the moment is this particular article. Bitcoin is poised to go to 150,000 by the end of 2024. And this is according to one analyst who's predicting this. But there are, of course, other indicators pointing to increased short-term selling. So if you take a six to 12 month view or wherever the end of the bull market is going to be, if it's going to be September, October or November next year, if you take the full cycle view, then this becomes more realistic. But as we know, anything can happen with Bitcoin. And Coming to 150,000 at the end of 2024, while that looks like a low probability, the possibility is always going to be there. But before we have a look at the ETF inflows and outflows, I just want to actually give you an insight into the liquidation heat map, which seems to be predicting very accurately in terms of the range the Bitcoin price seems to be moving. So what we've got is these yellow zones where we have the leverage players with their stops to the upside and to the downside. So you can see that the bigger zone down here is at around about the 62,200. And as we've seen previously, the price seems to come back down to these zones and take those stops out. So this was a yellow zone and look where it came down to, all the way down to that level. So this is quite a high probability play here down to the 62,200. And to the upside, what we've got here is 64,300 and 64,500. So around 64 and a half in the coming days, we could get a price up here. But as we know, with the 60 day cycle, when we have a look at it, we are coming towards the end of the cycle. And what we normally get before the end of the cycle is a pullback into that 60 day cycle. So this is where this may well have a pullback down to the low 60s here. And moving on to the ETFs, asset inflows and outflows. Over the last seven days, what we've had is quite a large amount of inflows into the ETFs here. So as you can see with BlackRock, who are now in the number one position, taking over Grayscale, over the last seven days, they've had an influx of 5,258 Bitcoins, while the Grayscale, which has been bleeding very fast since January, has lost about 1,500, which was nearly all made up by ARK21 shares. And as you can see with the rest of the figures, they're all in the green here. There seems to be on balance a net inflow rather than an outflow. So the market may well be moving more to the upside according to the ETF inflows and outflows in the short term anyway. And if we move on to the wider markets, we really need to start off with the dollar because the dollar is doing exactly as we have been expecting over the last many, many weeks and months. And if we look on the weekly chart here, we had this symmetrical triangle where we expected after finding support three times that on the fourth go, it was a high probability play that this was going to fall back to the downside. And what we got here was a strong support level, which had, had obviously a breakdown here, but a good strong support level at these points here at around about the 101. And you can see with this candle last week, we've got a very strong red candle to the downside. So we've now broken this support. And as mentioned many times in the past, when we were in this region, that eventually we're going to come and retest this level here. And what we've got is a retest of that level. But obviously there is another level here. So we should get down to about this level, about 99 in the coming days. And it may take a couple of weeks. We don't know. And of course, this can easily have a bounce back up here to retest this as a resistance before this comes back down. But eventually it's going to come down to this zone here, which has a further amount of support at this point, as we can see from the historical perspective here. So all looking good for the wider markets because the dollar is actually putting less pressure on the other markets. Okay, moving on to the SPX, we've got some interesting developments here. We've taken the end of this cycle over here rather than a failed cycle from at this point. So if we move this red line to this point on day 73, we've had a bounce from the end of that cycle to start this new cycle here. The halfway point will be on day 30 at this point here, the white dotted line. And the end of the cycle will be obviously 30 days on from that. Okay, so this is where the current cycle is. And as per usual with cycles, what we've got is a run up into the midpoint here. Whether we get above this point is another matter at the moment because obviously there's a potential for a double top here. And if we do get above this neckline, 
that will be giving us a clue, the divergence down here, that we're going to have a mid-cycle pullback. And that could well be to this neckline over here. And that should set it up for the next leg of the second half of this cycle, which should take it above this point to give us a right translated cycle and the continuation of the bull market. And of course, many people are predicting that this is going to be a double top and we're going to be coming back down hard. So only time will tell. We can only look at what the charts are presenting. And when we zoom out on the SPX on the weekly time frame here, to take into account going back to 2009, the recession that we got here, you can see that from that point onwards to where we are currently, if you were to draw a trend line, it is a non-stop, one big bull market. And of course, we had the end of the last bull market at the end of 2022. But what we've had since then is a continuation. So it would be a brave man to say that this is now going to have a big crash to the downside. And only time will tell. But so far, if you just zoom out and look at the bigger picture, it's telling you that this trend line, it is giving us a strong pointer into the direction of travel for the SPX. And if we move on to the gold chart, what we've really got here is gold is absolutely powering ahead with this bull market that is started at the end of 2022, just like Bitcoin. And what we're really getting is this a big continuation to the upside here. Having broken this neckline from back in 2011, having broken that neckline, you can see that there is a big trajectory to the upside. And if we have a look at the weekly time frame, it's giving us quite a lot of information that we had this particular range that we've been looking at over the last many weeks and months. And that is that we now broke above this with a clear green solid Marabozu candle. And what we're doing is consolidating with a bull flag here. So this should be a continuation pattern for further upside gains. So those of you who are in gold can expect much further rises in the coming weeks and months. So as you can see, since the beginning of the year in 2024, we created this bull flag with this pole and this flag here. And this is usually a continuation to the upside, as we've mentioned many times before. And this is exactly what we've now got, a move to the upside and with further gains to come. If we move on to silver, silver seems to have stalled a little bit, but there are signs that it's about to break this neckline very shortly here. So last month, what we got is a indecision candle that silver had to make up its mind which direction it wants to go. So that was the July candle. But the current August candle with four days to go, we can see quite clearly there's a nice long wick at the bottom, which is telling us that there is a rejection of lower prices down here. And the buyers want to push this to higher levels. And with gold leading the way, we should expect this for silver in the coming weeks and months. Okay, moving on to the 60 day cycle, a few important levels that we really need to be aware of. We've been mentioning this level here at 65,000 and once again, we've got rejected right at that point. And so far, having started the cycle back here on the 5th of July, we had a normal run up here into the midpoint. And before we got to the midpoint, we had the normal midpoint pullback here, which we would have expected to have a bounce at this point. But for various reasons, as we know, with the jobless claims, etc, etc, that occurred around this time here, we got a far bigger pullback than was anticipated all the way down to 49,000. But since then, we did make a recovery. And really what we've got is three zones. So we've got this zone now from 70, 73,000 all the way down to 65,000. And then from 65,000, we've got this zone to the $60,000 mark. As you can see, there's been a lot of support and resistance, but also it's also chopped this level up many, many times, which means that it's not respecting it as much as you would have thought. So it has chopped this up a little bit, but it is still a zone around about the 60,000, which is a round figure, which is what Bitcoin does respect. But we also have this zone down here from 60,000, all the way down to 50,000. And the reason why these are important, it gives us some sort of a semblance in terms of the likelihood of what Bitcoin may do in the coming cycle when this one ends around here. So when this cycle ends around the first week of September, depending on where this ends up, will give us a clue in terms of the probability whether we're going to break up above the 73,000 all time high or we're going to spend another cycle in consolidation mode. So currently what we've got 
From the start of the cycle, we are currently today, on Tuesday, the 27th of August, we are currently on day 53. And as we know, we are well within the realms of coming to the end of this cycle. As we've seen, we've had day 42, day 57, day 65. So around about the 60 day cycle with a few days either side, we should have a determination, the end of the current cycle and the beginning of a new cycle. And what we can see when we look at this picture is that we have lower highs along the way. And currently we have another lower high. So it looks with a higher probability that coming to the end of the cycle where we would expect some sort of a pullback into the cycle. So we may well, if we get a surge in demand for Bitcoin, we may even get above the current 65 level, which looks unlikely at the moment. But if we do get that, we could get a retest of the 70,000. But being at the last final stages of the 60 day cycle, the higher probability play is that we have now got rejected at the 65,000. And what we're doing is we're waiting for a pullback into the 60 day cycle low, which should be at around about the 60, 61, 62,000. So that little flush out will mark the signal for the end of the current cycle and the beginning of the new one. And if we do get to this point here, then what we are is in the mid zone here. So instead of being in the 70,000 to 65,000, where this would have given us a great opportunity and in the next cycle to break above the 73,000. So had we been in this zone, obviously the probability would have been to test and break the 73,000. And unfortunately, we've got ourselves so far in the mid range here, which gives us a 50% chance to break in the next cycle to the upside. But it also gives us a 50% chance to break down and retest the 50,000. And only time will tell. But when we consider that in this particular range that we've had so far, We've had the grayscale selling on an unprecedented level. We've had the German government selling a lot of their Bitcoins. We've had the Mt. Gox situation increasing the supply. And we've also had others like Celsius, Gemini Earn and Genesis Trading, etc. And despite all that, the lowest we've been able to come down to is a 30% reduction from the top here. And we're still within this consolidation range despite all that selling pressure. But now that that is out of the way, you would think that on balance, if we do get stuck in this range here between 65 and 60, the probability is without that selling pressure for us to retest the 70,000 here rather than a fall down to the 50,000. Please remember, this is a probability thing. Of course, it can come down here, but I would say the probability of it coming down here is more like 20 to 30%, whereas to go and retest the 70,000 it's more like 60, 65 percent. And of course, we've got the possibility that it might just stay in this range as well for another cycle. So in order to break this trend of the lower highs that we've been making along the way here, we really need to get, whether it's in this cycle or the next cycle, we need to break this level here. On the 29th of July, we came up to 70,000. So to break this lower highs pattern here, we need to get above this 70,000. And that will be your clue that we are moving to the upper side from there onwards. But like I said, because we're stuck in this range here between 65 and 60, this is a low probability play that we'll get to that. This seems to be more like that this week where we expect some sort of an end of this cycle, what we can do is to expect a pullback into the end of this current cycle here rather than a move up and to retest this level here. At such a deep end of the cycle, we tend to expect pullbacks rather than breakouts of the upside. So let's see what happens. But this is where the cycles are at the moment. We're at the deep end of the cycle. We expect a pullback. We're in the mid range here with a 50% chance to the upside and a 50% chance to the downside. But on a balance of probabilities with less pressure on Bitcoin, that 50% probability to the upside and the downside gives a leaning towards more to the upside rather than to the downside. But let's see how things play out. It's all about probabilities. There are no guarantees and certainties with Bitcoin. And if we look at this consolidation, and we look at the Bitcoin miners at this point, while Bitcoin has come down from the 73,000 to the 49,000, around about 33, 34%. We can see that with Marathon Digital Holdings, which is one of the major miners, it's come down from $34 to yesterday's close of around 1856. It's come down by more than 45%. And as you can see down here, it had come down 
to as much as 60%. So as we know with the Bitcoin miners, they are a leverage play to the upside as well as to the downside. So when Bitcoin comes down by 30%, the Bitcoin miners come down by 50, 60 or even more percent. And if we're expecting another leg for the Bitcoin price, then what do you think the Bitcoin miners are going to do when the price eventually starts to move to the upside? So when we zoom out on the monthly time frame here, what we can see is that at the end of the bear market, which was at the same time as Bitcoin, i.e. at the end of 2022, what we've had is a series of big moves to the upside. And currently we are at the bottom of that market here. And we run a private members section here, which covers only the Bitcoin miners in terms of having a portfolio of Bitcoin miners, as well as doing swing trades through what we call ratio trades. And if you've been thinking about joining the private member section, then it's no point joining us when the market has gone up here. And this is unfortunately what tends to happen when people get into the euphoria of where the markets go up here, they join the club, only to see their portfolios running down to low levels. And many then drop out at this point. And then similarly, this happened in the last phase of the rally that we got here. And unfortunately, this then happens. Now, currently we are at this point. So while there are no guarantees with the Bitcoin miners, just like there are no guarantees with Bitcoin or the money markets, what we can see is that if there is a belief that we have another run up to the upside coming up, just like we did over here in the last cycle, when we ran up to $84 with Marathon from the low here of around about 35 cents. So this big move here, from the low to the high was 220x. And of course, nobody can guarantee anything like that here. But if you were thinking of joining before, then it would be prudent to get that last move at this bottom level when you've got a 45, 50% discount, rather than when the market gets to the top here, which is what we're expecting to do, and then expect a breakout there on the last leg of the parabolic bull market. So this would, to me, represent an incredibly good opportunity. And if you're looking for guarantees, then the private member section isn't for you. If you want to take a mature view of the great opportunity that is available here, and it is an opportunity, then this would represent an amazing opportunity to get in more at the lower level rather than at the higher levels. And if you do want to join us with that opportunity to capture the rest of this bull market from where we are to the end where we expect at the end of 2025, then all you have to do is to click the join button here below any of my videos or the red button here in the Bitcoin Miners membership join link here. And for the price of a coffee per week at $12.99, you can have access to all the market updates on a daily basis after the markets close, as well as the videos that we do on the Wednesday and the Friday dedicated to looking for opportunities for ratio trades, as well as running a portfolio of the current Bitcoin miners. So what we're doing over the private member section is running a portfolio that we started at the end of 2022 or beginning of 2023 on the 6th of January, the portfolio of the Bitcoin miners ended up at the end of 2023, i.e. within 12 months, going from 100,000 to 434,000. And we're comparing that amount with a passive portfolio, i.e. what will 434,000 with a passive portfolio, i.e. doing nothing, no swing trades, no ratio trades, no nothing at all, just passively holding that amount, what will that give us at the end of the bull market? Because this itself was a passive portfolio which grew by 4x here. And so far, with the pullback that we've had so far in 2024, this is down about 15% at the last count on the 22nd of August, that was last week. And as you can see here, we've got a target of 5 million, which may seem quite excessive at the moment. But just recently, a few weeks ago, this figure of 371,000 was actually over 500,000. And we are expecting with the Bitcoin miners for a 10x between where we are to the end of the current bull market. So that would take us around about this figure here. And what we're doing with that passive portfolio, comparing that same amount of money to see what would happen if we traded that amount on a regular basis, doing ratio trades, which we've been doing now since the beginning of this year. And that portfolio through a series of around 16, 17 trades, Instead of the portfolio being down, that is now 5% up, while the Bitcoin miners are around 50% down. So you can see that we've been very successful in our trading portfolio. So our trading portfolio currently is at 458,000. And as I showed you a few weeks ago, this figure was 720,000. So you can see that within a few weeks, 
this can grow very, very quickly. And of course, the converse of that is it can actually fall very, very quickly. So we are in a very volatile market. And if you can't stand the volatility, then member section is not for you. So you have to expect volatility. You will have to expect sometimes your portfolio will be down. But as long as you take a six to 12 month view, you will give yourself the best chance to capture the whole of the growth from now until the end of the bull market. And once again, our target here is 5 million, which at current levels here with an expectation of a 10x, that would give us near about the 5 million. So let's see what happens. If we do get the 5 million, then that would be a 45x from the 100,000 that we started off at the beginning of 2023. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to capture the end of the bull market from currently where we are to the end here. So we've just got this bit now to capture between now and the end of the bull market. This is going to be the most explosive move, what we call the parabolic move. And in that portfolio, we've already been able to capture this level here. And this is now the second leg. So our belief is that this is what we're going to capture. And if you believe that we've already topped out here, then obviously maybe you shouldn't even be investing in this market if you think that's already topped out and the market is about to go lower. But if your belief is like ours here at Wisdom Bites, that there is another leg to go, then the Bitcoin miners do present a wonderful opportunity over the next 12 months or so. Okay, so we'll leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you have any comments, leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.